talk about that. Oh. It's dark down here. It's, it's quite. Pro Sorry for the slight delay, we had some technical problems earlier and it's kind of blocked us on a little bit. Uh, just a couple of quick messages. If you want the toilets, uh, oh, we're on again now. Um, if you want the toilets, uh, back end of the corridor and then first left and first left again, it's behind this wall. Not literally behind this wall, but you know what I mean, back there. Um, if you hear something that sounds like a fire alarm, it's either some weird noise from here, so if nobody's panicking, don't worry. If everybody is panicking, the fire exits are at the back where you came in, door on the left, or apparently this screen will magically disappear and there's a fire exit behind that. Um, two rumours I need to dispel. The first is that these graphics behind us is not Uli Behringer's list of new products. That's not true. Um, and the other thing is that if you bought a Euro rack, it will still work after October the 31st. I promise. Um, let me introduce you to Marta and Tom, who are going to talk about composing with tape. Marta. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, composing with tape. So, why tapes? For me, tapes are musical instruments, so um, I like considering uh, their musical instrument because they're not only a means of recording, which is how we often just see them as, you know, multi-track recording or, um, you know, reel-to-reel. -reel. Um, so working in a studio, I was really fascinated by the machine per se, you know, to me, very calming, calming motion and uh, Somehow, um, especially when making music, I don't feel too engaged looking at the screen. You know, I need something manual to engage with, to actually have a break from, uh, from this hyper-reality we put ourselves in. And so I started trying to play around with tapes in a way that um, I wasn't supposed to, you know, uh, or, well, you know, um, kind of like a fun experimentation I started uh, pursuing. and. Uh, and I realized they, they're sometimes very underrated as instruments, especially when you have a, a source, another instrument to play with and jam uh, together. They can create very unusual and different scenarios that we can't really replicate um, with anything else. You know, we, uh, we're gonna see uh, how to create delays or how to create loops, but not just delays and loops. You know, they've got something different. Uh, it's intrinsically different, and uh, so yeah, my instruments will be these tapes, and Tom here yeah, will play the book club. And so let's see. I've got this was my very first tape machine that I bought, and it's a PR99 a Revox. Um, <coughs> let's say that it's the most professional out of the three, uh, XLRs, and very speed. So what's special about the very speed, we'll, we'll see how, with the book club, we're going to make some sounds and then we're going to create uh, counter rhythms with the, with the delays of the tape machine. And uh, with the very speed, that means we can change effectively the speed of the tape that you'll see <coughs> going faster. A different speed of 15 and 7.5 OPS. And so these will determine how fast the repeats will be. And uh, not only the repeats, but the tonality of the tape will be different. We have a more high fidelity option, which is the 15, where the tape runs faster, so it reproduces sounds with more fidelity, let's say uh, more high end. And then we got the slower ones, which I really like because of the, uh, the warmth that, they, that it has. So we'll explore all that in a second. And uh, in terms of the setup here, I've got a desk, got the book club coming in to channel, then we got the PR99 as a send, as a stereo send, and then we've got these other two tape machines. And this is something which I was experimenting with one day in the studio. I thought, I like looping, but what if I put another tape machine and then I use that in record and then in playback? 
and then realize what it happens is you have a delay, but it's a very long delay. So all this physical space that the tape has to travel actually replicating in what we're going to hear back. So let's say we'll hear a note, and then after, depending how far apart they are, then we'll hear it back after five seconds. It depends on, the, uh, on how far apart they are. And then when we feed them back into each other, then they're going to start creating polyrhythms. And this kind of unexpected way of, uh, you know, shouting sound back at you, that I find very refreshing. So everything can go wrong at any minute. And I think that's what, that was what I like about this day machine, you know. For example, right now, this, I'm, running, I'm running this in mono, because for some reason, then the channel doesn't work. It just decided, like, oh well, so they know. Finally. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's fun. I mean, that's the bottom line. Um, <laughs> and uh, so this was, let's say that this was the most fun part. The part which is quite tricky is how to get to this, which is uh, editing, tape editing, editing block, um, sticky tape, razor blades. So, I don't know if in the room there is anyone who's got a history of uh, recording back in the days, but I'm sure you're very uh, familiar with those elements. You know, there are like amazing stories of people back in the days and you know, when tape was the only uh, technology available to record. Like rooms full of tape loops and uh, going everywhere left and right. <coughs> well now, no. You know, my point uh, in using tapes is not just having a, uh, let's say, it's, you know, I've, I'm seeing the romantic side of it, but mostly is the fact that I can't achieve this with anything else. And whether that is a mixture of um, the relationship with, you know, with your hands and the actual um, material and the process, I think is very important. It's as important as the outcome. So that's why, those are the reasons for me to use tape. And they're not machines, they, you know, they can be a bit intimidating. Um, they're not around much anymore, but you can, you can find them, and you can, if you use them, they just, I think, they're just very, they're just very different. It's, a, it's like a good experience that comes out of them. All tape, what you need to do, if you do have all tape and you want to digitalize it, uh, contact a, a, um, a company that can bake tape. So you, that you just put your tape into an oven and that makes it being able to, to be played again without completely uh, disintegrate. You know, it just lasts longer. That's what they do for tape archiving. Uh, but you can't do it in your own oven, I think. It's quite toxic. Tape is bad if it burns. So, yeah, that's tape um, uh, digitalizing and uh, um, archiving. Hello? Hi. Um, I, I wanted to clarify something. I think I understand, but I, I'd like to challenge it off here. Set up of the two Akai mm -hmm. players, the, the delay time is dictated by the physical distance between one of those players recording and the other one playing back. Is that correct? That's why, it, that's in my experience, and, and uh, feels the, like, yeah. And then on the, the professional machine, that same physical distance is the distance between the record head and mm -hmm. the playback head. Yeah. Uh, and then you can tune the time by varying the speed. Yes. The, the tape will take longer or or less time to go between the two. Yeah. But, but in essence you've got the same thing going on where you're recording in one position and playing back at a different, at a different position. position. But it's, mm -hmm. it's the gap between two heads on that machine whereas it's the gap between two machines on the other side. Yeah. You put it in, in a very clear way. I should have actually said that. <laughs> also, I mean, like the first time I did it, I was like, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Um, it just sounds cool. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's what's happening. You know, to me, it's been like a retrospective kind of, I thought, recording there, why not playing back? Yeah. And, you know, literally taking, send out into the input, then taking the output back and so yeah that's what it is you here you got the heads lined up and then you got you just engaging one hand and then disengaging it on the same thing machine engaging it back on this one yeah thank you cool thank you very much um martyr and tom thank you very much
if any of you are interested in seeing a guy called Gerald, uh, he's currently on a train called Bus Replacement Service. Uh, and he won't be here until about half past five. So we're running a little bit late for that, but he will be here uh, and it will be about half past five. Thank you.